Okay, we're back inside theCUBE here at EMC World 2012. We are doing a spotlight on cloud services, cloud applications, cloud deployments, hybrid cloud. Um, I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and we're here with Toby Owen of Rackspace. Toby's involved in, in the hybrid cloud solutions part of the business. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. First time on? Right? Yeah, and, <laughs> it is. Uh, Quite a show. Uh, how, have you typically frequented EMC Worlds? Or is this no, this is our first time. Yeah, what do you show. think? It, it's, it's impressive, yeah. it's a big show. Lots of good technology going yeah, on. Yeah, so. of, a lot of customers here, a lot, yeah. Of, yeah. lot of action going on, right? Absolutely. So, um, so tell us, what's happening with, uh, with Rackspace? The hybrid cloud, hybrid cloud's hot. You know, we're going to share some data with you, and uh, what are you guys seeing out there? Well, um, we initially launched a hybrid cloud offering called Rack Connect uh, about a year and a half ago. Right. And um, we've really seen kind of tremendous pickup from our customers um, over the last year and a half. Yeah, at the time of the announcement, hybrid cloud was sort of new, right? And the, yeah. the reaction was sort of tepid. People were sort of, eh, I mean, we did some surveys at the time, single digits in terms of people said, oh yeah, hybrid cloud, that's my primary strategy. But it, that, that's really changed in the past 12, 13 months, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I, I remember attending some cloud shows a year, year and a half ago, and, and hybrid cloud, might have been a, you know, on a bullet point on a slide and now there's you know, entire segments dedicated to it. So it's Why do you think that is? It's just the, the, the industry's done a better job of sort of proving it out or? Well, I think a, a couple of things. I think um, that as, as we sort of peeled back the, the marketing shine on cloud <laughs> and customers are starting to really dive in, uh, right. particularly enterprises, around how we're going to use this for production applications, they realized that, that moving everything to the cloud all at once represents um, sometimes a pretty major project. And so hybrid is really a way to help customers start to use the cloud as, as a part of their application so they can start that migration a little bit quicker. Um, and, and I think uh, another reason it's important is that um, it allows existing kind of traditional IT, dedicated servers, dedicated storage um, to be paired up with cloud. And so it can help overcome some of the shortcomings that, that cloud that's still really in its infancy uh, may have today. So, but I infer from what you just said that that there's a, a direction that people want to, you know, get there. Yeah. Eventually. Right. It's a, so you see that as the uh, as the end state is a uh, is a predominantly public cloud strategy. Is that right? Or we do. I think. Um, I think cloud today uh, we're seeing more and more adoption, but I think the bulk of of all the workloads are still running kind of in traditional formats, whether yep. that's that's hosted or. or do it yourself in your own data center. Um, and I think over time, we're going to see that change um, where most, most applications are going to be running in the cloud, but there's still going to be a need for um, dedicated infrastructure um, to kind of fill some of the gaps. And I think hybrid is not a, a, a short-term transition as a way to get to cloud. I think hybrid's going to be the reality for the next 10 or 15 years. So, so it's, it's a business model, you're saying. Absolutely. So um, how are Cuff's customers um, dealing with sort of consistency in policies and procedures and things like security, what's an incident, what should be reported, what can I audit? Is, is the industry stepping up to, to provide that level of visibility and consistency that is satisfying the enterprise? Is that a part of this sort of adoption curve? Well, I think, um, I think the industry is responding to those needs. Mm -hmm. I think it takes time. Um, any, any new technology, any new platform takes time to develop sure. those things and, and kind of the, the higher level requirements are definitely being driven by the enterprise today. Um, we're involved in a, in a project called OpenStack, which is seeking to define kind of an open standard for cloud computing. Yeah, we I know think. it well, we've been following yeah. it. And yeah. uh, we're excited about it. Um, you know, we've put forth some caveats to our customers, right. but still, it's a lot of, a lot of momentum behind it in right. the developer community. Yeah, right? the networking yeah. side seems to be dynamic. I was talking to Nisera. Um, they're doing a lot of S, uh, software defined networking as yep. well. A lot of the network guys are coming into OpenStack, so we were kind of commenting like, OpenStack's getting traction down at the network layer mm -hmm. kind of quietly, no one's really kind of talking about that. How does that affect your architecture? Because you want OpenStack to be open, you want right. the ecosystem to develop, but you guys got a business to run, service customers. That's right. So you can be open and grow in the ecosystem, at the same time you got to deliver operations. So yeah. it's ops dev in this case, right? Yeah. Uh, dev ops, ops dev. So um, how do you guys handle that challenge? And talk about the balance of the networking component? Well, I think networking is really key um, to, to building a cloud at scale. Um, I think some of the earlier cloud platforms, um, including our own, really ran into challenges when we got to a certain size. And I think um, software-defined networking is, is a big key to kind of unlock the next 
level of scale. And so uh, implementing things like isolation within a multi-tenant environment are really going to help overcome, like you mentioned, some of the security problems or, or concerns mm -hmm. around cloud today. From uh, Rackspace perspective, there's a lot of talk about convergence and you're bringing compute and storage and networking together. From your perspective, what does that all mean? And, and we, we hear a lot about the, the good. What are, mm -hmm. the, what are some, of the, some of the nuances and gotchas that you have to worry about with regard to that? Whether they're organizational, is it sort of new process models you have to put in place? Yeah. How's that all sorting out for you? Well, I think, um, I think that's an important message to deliver, that there are things that customers need to think about as they're planning kind of that journey into the cloud, um, that it's not take my application and forklift it into the cloud and everything's going to work the mm -hmm. same, right? And so, um, I think one, one of our approaches uh, and, and how Rackspace really, our, our kind of key strategy and, and vision is to be one of the world's greatest service companies. And so, our cloud strategy plays, plays into that pretty well where we want um, not only great technical support, but also great user experience. And so all of our design um, principles are, are geared around making um, cloud easy to use, um, intuitive. Um, hybrid um, is, is another example there where we've really gotten down into the weeds and make that infrastructure um, easier to provision uh, so that customers don't need to think as much about all the ins and outs of how the network works between you know, two different environments. So what is hi uh, hybrid metro? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Hybrid Metro um, is a really a proof of concept that we've started uh, in conjunction with, with Brocade mm -hmm. and EMC, um, as well as uh, Macergy uh, Communications. And, and it's based on a technology stack to do synchronous replication within a metro area um, so that workloads can be more easily migrated from a customer data center um, to a cloud provider. And, and we really feel like the next frontier for hybrid is moving outside of a single data center, uh, a Rackspace data center where we've got dedicated and cloud sort of under the same roof, and, and connecting up in an easy way, in an integrated way to a customer environment. So hybrid Metro is, is the result of some testing of this, um, this use case, this technology stack. And it's really a way for us to engage with customers and, and explore with them, is this a use case uh, that meets some needs that you have today? Uh, are there other use cases that are similar? Um, because we really feel like if we can do a good job enabling that connection to happen, um, then we can start to build clouds that span distance and, and really start to see kind of a, a larger adoption of cloud. So the objective is a, 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 a zero data loss synchronous capability for disaster recovery? Yeah, uh, I think there's right? a number of use cases. I think yeah. that zero uh, RTO business continuity is, is certainly one of them. Um, but it doesn't necessarily need to be that. Um, the ability that to easily move data um, through replication between sites makes things like live virtual machine migration um, much easier to do. Um, the idea of I need to take um, a bunch of capacity and move it somewhere else because I've got some maintenance to do might be a great use case for that by, by shipping you know, a large test or development environment out, out to a service provider um, so I can do this maintenance without impacting customers is another great use case. And then when you talk, talk about doing it at distance, you mean at asynchronous distance? Is that the next step or? Well, potentially. Yeah. Right, and I think we're really trying to get um, close to our customers on this um, to understand what, what are the needs they have today that are going to, that are, or the, the pain they have around moving to the cloud and, and how will this solve that problem, right? So, so it's essentially putting the cloud into a remote replication right. environment. Right. Utilizing the cloud, utilizing outsourced resources as opposed yeah. to building your own data centers. And, exactly, yeah. so as, as, as enterprise IT shops are running out of space in their data centers, they've got a couple of choices. One, sign another big 20 year lease and do construction and, and add capacity. Or two, might be to, to take that, uh, those new workloads or additional workloads and move those to a service provider. So it's really, it's a different model for us. Uh, in that we are now an extension of, of a customer's existing IT infrastructure. Yeah. Chance to get out of the real estate business. <laughs> that's right, that's so right. We, so um, Brocade was just on talking about simplicity, um, what were they saying, simplicity, low cost, which is networking you know, parlance for yeah. hey, low cost, high performance solutions, but simplicity is a hard thing to crack in the cloud because it's not that simple, but as you move up the stack, the middle ground, middle layer is kind of complex, you guys are doing that with multi-tenancy and other stuff, so, so um, what is your relationship with Brocade? And talk mm -hmm. about, are they achieving that simplicity? I mean, 
I mean, it, it sounds good, right? But give us the give us the scoop. I mean, you know, what are they doing with you? Well, guys? I, I think simplicity for the customer is what's important. Um, I think under the covers, um, there's a lot of technology and, and uh, development that needs to go into to making a good customer experience. Uh, I think. Brocade has been a great partner with us um, and really helped us kind of solve some, some key infrastructure areas. They've, they've been involved in our IPv6 readiness. Um, some of the, the scale issues as we continue to grow our, our user base around really large networks, um, helping us solve some of those problems. And I think um, in terms of hybrid, we've, we've been actively engaged with Brocade as well in, in creating automation and, and integration. What does um, cloud optimized networks mean? Because that's kind of a buzzword, it's kind of a fuzzy term. Um, they kick that around. What does that really mean? I mean well, you. I think cloud optimized network means that it, it's easy, it, it's provisioned in the same way that cloud is, um, either through uh, a user interface or, or through a programmatic interface and API, um, so that it can really be provisioned and configured on demand. Um, I think if you contrast that with sort of the traditional model of Let's stand everything up, spend a couple of weeks or a couple of months getting all the equipment online configured. Uh, it's a very different model, right? I want, I want my cloud servers on demand at the push of a button. Well, I want my network to respond the same way. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, DevOps. Talk about hmm. Rackspace's vision around DevOps. I know you guys are very pro um, developer yeah. in this area. Um, and it's not a surprise to I'll go back right. to Lou Mormon's conversations that we had uh, in 2008. Right. Um, and Brett and those guys. Um, mm -hmm. um, so you guys are really ahead of the curve on, on this area. Um, but now the EMC culture, or the mm -hmm. big guys, are kind of getting a whiff of the DevOps. And I think next year will be the year of DevOps. Uh, right. That's our prediction. We believe that to be true. What did you, what's your take on that now? Uh, give a perspective on, from Rackspace's view and your experience at Rackspace, what's going on in the DevOps world? And, how is this crossing the chasm to the mainstream? Right, well I think, um, first off, we're following that DevOps model in our product development. So we've got developers and operations guys sitting together doing continuous testing, um, allows us faster cycle times on development, uh, and it really allows um, the production of better code in the end, right? Because you, you catch your problems earlier, you're able to address them um, kind of in line. I think from a cloud consumer point of view, um, it, it's, Go back to what we talked about, cloud optimized networks. It's really about having a programmatic interface to all of your infrastructure, right? And so you start to tear down those silos of um, system administrator, network administrator, developer, uh, because coding you gotta, you to gotta an API. You got to be, you got to be versatile. Well, uh, it, in other it, words, it, developers aren't usually network guys, and no, network guys aren't right. developers. So right. DevOps is really like saying, "Hey, there's no distinction. You're all one." Well, I, I think there's nuance in that. I don't yeah. think that the developers it's not are that, gonna, not that easy. They're not yeah. going to come in and be a network architect, right? But yeah. the ability to start to provision infrastructure. Push, push buttons. Yeah. Well, if coding an application looks a lot like coding to an API. Yes. Right, so it allows some yes. of that, that cross-training and cross-pollination to happen. I think it gives uh, enterprises a lot more flexibility on how to deploy their, their internal technical resources. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it, Dave. That's an interesting comment because what that does is that kind of gives us a, a frame because what DevOps really is is programming to an API for a developer. Yeah. Knowing that there's trust and the network guy's giving an API, knowing there's trust because, you know, in the old model, it's like, you know, shadow IT exists because ops won't let the developers do their thing and vice versa. So DevOps right, right now is such a fun area to watch because depending on who you talk to, there's a different definition. But yeah. you guys are actually executing this in the market with, Rack, with Rackspace, with OpenStack. Right. Um, and then your product development. Um, so, so DevOps, so we just did a survey uh, yeah. in the Wikibon community. 40% of the respondents said DevOps, the term is new, new to me. Right. I didn't know what that is. And then about 16% said we're just getting up to speed with Agile. You know, mm -hmm. Give me a break on DevOps. But at the same time, about 12% said we're doing DevOps and we're seeing hyper productivity as a result. So yeah. it's, it's new, it's a very exciting area for well, us. I think that's really the goal is, um, similar to cloud, it's, it's about agility and how quickly can you move through getting the next thing done in IT. We, we had a conversation with a customer recently that he actually took his systems administrators and sat them next to the developers to sort of force that model because they're, they're doing more and more huh. of their production applications in the cloud and that's really helping them. A little empathy training? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's so right. in one minute we have left, uh, I want to just get your quick perspective. Really appreciate the time coming on Rackspace. You guys are doing some great work. Uh, we're big fans of Rackspace. We're a customer actually on one of our sites. Um, talk about security. Obviously it's, an, it's a moving train right now. Yeah. Um, securing the apps, securing the data. I just put some stuff out on Twitter just before you came on about uh, the bring your own device to work is really kind of fueling the debate on how the interaction at, yep. the, at the hybrid is. Um, and so, uh, 
Um, that's one factor. Talk about security uh, from the edge. Yeah. Bring your own device, securing the device, which is, we don't think, I'm not for that. Secure the app and the data. And how does that affect the, the hybrid cloud? So the general tech consensus is, secure the app and the data and you're good. Right. And you got virtualization to help there. How does that affect some of the cloud optimized networks? Yeah, well, I, I, a couple of things there. I think as you move to a more distributed model, which cloud really is, um, security needs to move down uh, closer to the data, right? Um, you, you no longer have this, this perimeter network that you can define and then everything in the middle is sort of that squishy middle with, with no security, right? So having kind of defense in depth and, and pushing that security closer to the data is definitely a good strategy. Um, I think hybrid is a good um, way to improve security over potentially just a pure cloud environment because you can bring some of the traditional, more mature security products to bear on a cloud environment, right? Having a, a dedicated firewall sit in front of your cloud servers or having DDoS mitigation or, or intrusion detection take, take part in securing your dedicated and cloud infrastructure together um, really helps kind of raise Does the Does the enablement security. of the brocade piece of that help you? They have good policy, I mean, how do they thread through that next layer? Because you know, that's essentially, they got to have the policy. Do they have that there? Yeah, I mean, uh, we support a, a couple of network platforms in our, in our Rack Connect hybrid offering. Um, and all of those devices um, are, are network devices, right? And so those devices aren't single purpose anymore. There's a lot of security built into them. And so that we're creating kind of the, that layered approach. We've got a firewall, maybe a load balancer, um, applying security policies um, throughout those um, in an automated way through APIs, through those network devices. Uh, and Brocade's definitely um, helping us out with that. Okay, I think uh, we're good. Dave, this is a good, good segment. Yeah, uh, so we, let's, we really appreciate you coming on sure. and uh, sharing Rackspace's uh, you know, thoughts and opinions. And uh, you know, we're watching this space. You guys are in the heart of it, doing some really innovative things with, uh, with OpenStack, so uh, congratulations with that. And yeah. uh, DevOps, great success story. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thanks, I All appreciate right, your time. appreciate it. Um, Rack, Rackspace, great success story in the DevOps movement. I think this is the year, uh, we're going to be, I'll predict right now, I'll go out on a limb. This is the year of DevOps, and it's going to be really about operational uh, efficiency with developers, really adding a lot to the table, tools and hybrid cloud. So uh, we'll, be more, we'll be right back with more spotlight on cloud applications, Thank cloud you, services, okay. right after this break. Okay.